Hi guys, uh, this Algebra 2 lesson is uh, called Inverse Functions. It's a pretty easy lesson, you guys. Um, uh, it's just graphing. and So anyways, let's go. An inverse uh, uh, relation interchanges your x's and your y's. So for example, if you had these ordered pairs, x comma y, x comma y, x comma y, x comma y, your inverse is just you just flip them around, you guys. So your new x, y is just flip them around. Can you see this is now 6, 0 instead of 0, 6? 4, 1 instead of 1, 4, and so on. So, um, and, and what they do is, well, I'll talk about that in a minute. I was going to talk about the reflection across a line y equal x, but that's coming up. Okay, so to find the inverse of a relation equation, what you do is you switch your x's and y's, and then you solve for the new y. So if you have this equation right here, uh, come on now, okay. So find the inverse of the relation y equals 4x plus 2. So we're going to switch the x's and y's x equals 4y plus 2, and then subtract 2 from both sides, divide by 4 from both sides. So your book's going to give you this answer. This answer is good enough for me right here. All right, so this would be the inverse of this guy right here. All right, and then uh, let's see. So uh, functions f and g are inverses of each other, provided that when you plug g into f, it, it simplifies to x, and provided that when you plug f into g, looks like I forgot another parenthesis right there, it simplifies to x also. So uh, the function g, which is the inverse, is denoted by f to the negative 1 power, and that's just read f inverse, okay? So that's not a negative 1 uh, exponent right there. That just means it's the inverse of f, so f inverse we're going to call it, okay? So verify that uh, f of x equals 3x minus 5 and f inverse of x equals 1 third x plus 5 thirds are inverses of each other. So what I'm going to do is plug um, uh, this g of x, which is this is my g of x, I'm going to plug this function in right there for this guy and it should crank out to be x and then I'm going to do ahead, go ahead and plug the f function over here into this g function right there. I'm going to put 3x minus 5 in right there. So here we go. I'm going to go ahead and put um, uh, the g into the f, okay, and it cranks out to be x, and then I'm going to go ahead and, and do the other way around and put the f into g, and that also cranks out to be x, and it has to do it on both to be the inverse of each other, and it will if they are inverses of each other. So a relation and its inverse are reflections across the line y equals x. So find the inverse of, of y equals x squared, f of x is y, and then graph f and uh, f inverse, okay? All right, so here we go, y equals x squared, so switch them and make it x equals y squared, and then square root both sides, and you get y equals plus or minus x, square root of x, I'm sorry, but since x is positive, I don't need to worry about the plus or minus. Uh, my f inverse is just gonna be y equals, uh, or f to the negative one of x, or f inverse of x equals the square root of x. Okay, so here is, you remember from uh, uh, your Algebra 1 class, uh, y equals x squared would graph this parabola that would come down right here. Okay, but we only want the x the positive side. So here's f of x that equals x squared. Okay, it's this side right here. This is when x is negative over here. Okay, and then so when I graph uh, the square root of x, look, there's a square root of 1, the square root of 4, if I go over 4, the square root of 4 is 2, so there's uh, uh, the inverse of the square root of x is this red guy right here. And can you see this line right here that's y equals x? It's like the mirror. The blue guy is a mirror image of the red guy and vice versa. The red guy is a mirror image of the blue guy as long as this equation, which is y equals x, is my mirror. Okay? And if they're inverses, then that's always going to be my mirror right there. All right? And you can just switch the x's. Look, you guys, this point right here, 4 comma 2, this point right here is 2 comma 4. You see that? Okay, so they're just switching your x's and your y's. All right, so the graph of, of f of x that equals x squared and g of x, a different function that equals x cubed, are shown on page 440 and below. I'll show you here, along with their reflections uh, on the line y equal x. And then, so do you guys remember the, the vertical line test? And if not, I'll show you that again. So notice uh, which inverse is a function using a vertical line test. So here's, here's this one first, okay? f of x equals x squared. I'm going to graph that one right here. Okay, so here's f of x equals x squared, and then here's the inverse. Okay, here's the square root of x, and here's that plus or minus. Here's the minus part of the square root of x. Here's the plus square root of x. Here's the minus square root of x, okay? And this side right here, can you see this side right here? Is this reflection down here, okay? So look at this point, 4, negative 2, 
is the same as negative 2, 4. Okay, it's the reflection of it. And they're mirror images. They go straight across right there. They're mirror images right there. Okay, and then the vertical line test, you guys. Let's see, I thought I put a line right there. Yeah, here's a vertical line. If I did the vertical line test, remember if I did this vertical line and slid it right across? Can you see on the blue function, it only intersects the blue function once? but it starts intersecting the red function more than once and if it intersects it more than once then it fails the vertical line test so this function right I'm sorry this is a function but its inverse is not a function right there okay now if I graph y equals x cubed which is right here this blue guy g of x equals x cubed it goes down and does that little s sort of shape we graphed that one of the earlier lessons right there okay and then so here's the cube root of x which is this red guy and it's the inverse of the blue guy so this red guy is a mirror image of this blue guy as long as y equals x is my mirror right here and can you see that one passes the vertical line test both the inverse and the original function it'll only intersect it and it most wants whoops I guess I can't go across but pretend like that's going underneath it I don't know why it's not it's not going across right there anyways right there so it'll only intersect either one of those graphs in at most one spot right there okay so they're both functions right there so the horizontal line test uh, on the inverse you guys the inverse of a function is also a function IFF means if and only if if and only if no horizontal line intersects the original function in at most one spot so for example you guys that first function well this function right here can you see uh, that if I drew a, a horizontal line test, if it only intersects the, the, the original function in one spot, then I know that its inverse is also going to be a function. Okay, but this, this function right here, and that is a function, it fails the horizontal line test, so that just means that the inverse wouldn't be a function if I graphed it. And we graphed it, it was that guy that was going like that, and it was not a function because it failed the, the vertical line test. But if they just give me a graph, I can just look and see, does it pass the horizontal line test? And that means if it does, then the inverse would be a function. Here, this fails the horizontal line test. So for example, you guys, let's try this. Consider the function f of x equals 2x cubed plus 1 and the graph is coming up. Determine whether the inverse of f is a function, then find the inverse. Okay, there's the graph right there. Does that graph pass the horizontal line test? Yes, it does. I can draw a horizontal line anywhere. In fact, I'll use this one right here. This horizontal line, it'll, if I could slide it up and down, it would only intersect that graph in one spot. So that means that the inverse is a function. Okay, so the graph passes the horizontal line test, so its inverse is a function, so it says then find the inverse. Okay, there it is. I switched the x's and the y's, subtracted 1, divided by 2, and then cube rooted both sides, so there's the inverse of that guy right there. Alright, and if you're in my Algebra 2 class, that would be your homework assignment.